cleft coat. What to know before you sew. Hey sewing friend, welcome to the Love Notions channel where we talk everything patterns and sewing and fabric. Um, I'm Tessa and today we're going to discuss everything that you need to know before you sew one of the cleft coats. Either the regular original cleft coat, the new base cleft coat, or the kids treble cleft coat. So the treble, the base, and the cleft coats are just ready for everyone in the family or on your team. Um, but you might wanna get a little bit of a deeper view of this pattern collection before you get started um, or you pull the trigger on purchasing. So let's go beyond the pattern listing. First, let's dive into some of the basics. So the cleft coat pattern released at the beginning of the year. Um, we were just totally thrilled to announce that Tammy decided to add on a menswear version and a kidswear version, the base and the treble cleft coats. Um, and they're now available, actually just starting today. Um, they're really sale, um, which is a $3 off uh, sale. And that's gonna be good through Monday, March 11th of 2024. This video is a, it's a great time to give you a full and complete introduction to all of the patterns in the cleft collection. And so we're gonna go beyond the basics, talk about some kind of different things related to the pattern. We've got different segments inside of this video that will give you a really full picture of this pattern and what it includes and you know things that would might be helpful for you when you fully understand it. Um, so you, hopefully you'll get all of the answers to any questions that you might have. But again, all of those other specifics can be found in the pattern listings. As far as the segments in this video, I love um, some of them and especially the like MVP section or the wardrobe section. Um, I really like this time, the stash, and uh, fabric section. Um, so if you have any ideas for future pattern reviews and other segments that might be fun to look at when we are going through what to know before you sew for other patterns, um, let me know, post in the comments. So you can get your copies of the clef coat pattern, the base, the trouble, or the original clef coat in the links in the description box. And um, make sure to take advantage of that sale price for both the base and the treble. These are definitely all patterns that will work hard in any wardrobe. Just to give you a full picture, um, let's talk about some of the basics. So the clef coats are all intended to have a relaxed fit style. Um, they're definitely meant for woven fabrics, but you can go ahead and use some stable knit fabrics. Um, they all have two closure options, either a zippered front, like what I'm wearing right now, or a buttoned or a snapped closure. Um, there are also two different hem options that you can use, either a drawstring hem where you have a channel um, and you have a, a separate drawstring string piece or you can just put elastic in. In terms of pockets, we love this about the, the pattern that it has both kangaroo, roomy, roomy kangaroo pockets on the front um, or you can install a welt breast pocket um, and you could do that on either side or both or none. Uh, and so you also can choose from a stand collar or a hooded cleft coat for all of the versions of this pattern collection um, and the as far as sizing, the adults versions are available in sizes extra small through 5X, and the kids version is available in sizes 2T to 16. All right, let's get going with everything else that you need to know before you sew and dive into the main segments of this video. So first up, my favorite, the wardrobe department. So in order to get like a nice general feel for the pattern, we're gonna imagine the cleft jackets um, in the wardrobe of a character in history or pop culture or somebody famous. So who would be wearing this coat? or jacket. Um, I have a few ideas that come to mind, but make sure that you let me know if you can imagine this being on some other character or famous person. You imagine treble, base, or cleft coat. Here's, here's what's happening in my head. So first up for treble cleft. When I see this coat, I see like Dennis the Menace for the kids version. Um, I think this is kind of like a callback to me for that cartoon that I used to read in the newspaper funnies when I was growing up. Um, the treble cleft coat is exactly that sort of like practical but cute outer layer that I could see a character like Dennis the Menace throwing on while he's running out to play. Um, this pattern is practical, um, it's durable, it's ready for play. 
And I think this jacket would be the perfect companion for um, any adventurous kid that's ready to explore the world and stuff a bunch of things in their kangaroo pockets, um, just like the precocious kid from the comic strip. So like I said before, it's got those roomy pockets um, and it's the sort of thing that really any kid would be happy to put on to run around the neighborhood um, and especially happy to put on if it was outfitted in their favorite fabric from their um, parent stash. Um, maybe it was fabric that shows off their interests or it was personalized with special details that really perk them up and that kind of match their personality. So as far as my kids, I know I am constantly having to tell my kids to like grab a jacket. Like they go out in like 30 degree weather. I, for some reason, have to remind them. And this is the type of thing that they'll be able to put on to go play with the neighbor kids. Um, and it's also something that they will happily grab because it's fabric that they've picked out and that they like. And even for my tweens, um, it's cool enough to wear around their friends. And it is fun enough for my five-year-old. Next, let's talk about the men's version of clef coat, base clef. Um, I think in terms of a character, I think a great representative for this type of pattern as far as menswear fits. Um, is John Dutton from Yellowstone. Now, I don't watch this show like regularly or anything, but I think we can all agree that this show is very popular in mainstream pop culture right now. And this style of jacket would totally appear in that rancher's wardrobe um, or on set for the TV show. So I actually searched for a quick picture of Don, John Dutton and I found tons of ideas for future base cleft coats, maybe one with a sheep skin collar, maybe a couple extra pockets here or there, some quilted fabric, even a sleeveless vest version would be really doable with this pattern. In the, this character's wardrobe, this would be that sturdy, rugged, practical piece. It's fit to go go to work in, um, in almost any season and any situation. I think this is a jacket that's just ready to be outside and ready to go. I don't know if you've noticed this lately, but there has been like a Carhartt phenomenon. Um, it seems like the brand has had like this like, like total like popularity this past year. Um, it's, it's like taking that ultra practical and utilitarian outerwear thing. And like even celebrities um, who I'm pretty sure haven't been near like a ranch or out in like the elements for a while, even they're wearing these types of jackets. And I love how the base, the travel and the cleft coats can all help you achieve that look without the price tag and made exactly to your specifications. Next, when it comes to the cleft, coat ladies wear versions, I have two people in mind that come to me that I think would totally have a jacket like this in their closets. And that's Jennifer Garner and Jennifer Lawrence. Um, both of these people have played like adventurous and uh, cool kinds of characters. And I think that they would use something that's a utilitarian like this. Um, I can totally see this on Katniss Everdeen and um, Jennifer Garner's character alias. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that show, but she would totally have this hanging up in her closet as well. Um, but actually for those people, like those actual celebrities in real life, I could see each of those characters having this in their closet as well. Like they all, they both have like a, like a down to earth practical sort of vibe. And I think that really epitomizes this jacket. Let's, let's talk for a second about this recent trend that we've been seeing about reshaping NFL merchandise. Um, this was recently popularized by Taylor Swift. And if you're not sure who that is, it's Travis Kelsey's girlfriend, at least right now. Um, so during their recent American football season, Taylor Swift and her friend Brittany Mahomes, who is the wife of another player, um, they wore these incredible custom NFL jackets. And if you take a closer look at them, they're almost exactly the same shape and style as the clef. So here's what's happened um, to create this look. One of the other wives of a football player in the NFL, she has been taking the licensed NFL like merchandise, which I don't know if you've purchased that before, but it's notorious for having an awful fit 
for especially female bodies. And so she's taking those items and she's recutting them and sewing them into these fabulous new custom jackets. So Taylor Swift wore a Travis Kelsey custom jacket from that designer and people just went crazy for it. And I also think this look is so cool. I'm not like a football fan, but I could totally see me getting into it because of this. And I think, wouldn't the cleft coat be just completely perfect for this project? Um, especially for the rest of us who are not quite on Taylor Swift's level yet. <laughs> so um, all of the versions of cleft would be perfect for this style of custom jacket. And, you know, if any of the reps from NFL, like merch team, if, they're, if you're watching, make sure to call us. I'm sure that you would be able to find a great fit with uh, the ladies wear at Clef. Then you could have merchandise that fit and was really cute too. So the Clef Co. is totally ready for that sort of situation. And in fact, one of the sewists on our private Love Notions Pattern Support Facebook group recently did just this. Um, she used a soft shell fabric and some pieces from her dad's football career. Take a look at this make that she put together. It is so amazing using this uh, recent trend. Next, let's explore some flags. So this is just kind of like a way for us to discuss some of the signs that you should note. So green flags or green lights mean that you're good to go. Red flags mean that you maybe should pass for right now. And beige flags are just some things that make you go, hmm, and mean that you might wanna just learn some more. So here are some signs that you are good to go or some green flags for this pattern. First, you wanna sew for the whole family. Maybe you want some matching pieces, maybe you are tired of searching for the right pieces in store, or maybe like me, you sewed one up for yourself using the uh, original cleft pattern and the rest of the family put in their requests. That's what happened to me. <laughs> so if this is you, cleft collection is completely ready for you. So you might, find another green flag if you're looking for a pattern that is ready to give you a great fit. So I don't know about you, but when I go to the store, nothing really fits great, <laughs> especially outer layer pieces like this. They're either too long or the sleeves are too long for me, or I've got a good fit in the shoulders, but it doesn't fit my hips and vice versa. So I really appreciate being able to sew an outer layer like this. And so if you're looking for something that can give a great fit, either for you or for somebody in your family, this is going to be a pattern collection that you might want to look at investing in. Um, I know that for my husband, he cannot find things with long enough sleeves. Um, and several of the male testers uh, models for the base club, they had the hardest time finding things that are in the right sizing for them. So this is just another perk of sewing is being able to make things in the correct size. So if you are looking for an outer layer pattern that will accommodate all sorts of sizes and blends of sizes and different specifications, you're going to want to pick this up, especially for that outer layer, because it's so hard to find that in stores sometimes. So if you identify with both of those things or some of those things, then this is really a pattern that you should take a closer look at and probably that you should pick up. So next, let's look at a few red flags or signs that this pattern is probably not quite right for you right now. Um, a red flag might be you only wear more fitted pieces. Um, this pattern is meant to be like a straight fit and very roomy. Um, uh, roomy to accommodate lots of layers or sweaters or other bulky tops. Um, and it's not like a slouchy, sloppy look, but it also isn't meant to be like figure hugging. So if you're not looking for that um, kind of more roomy fit, you're either going to need to like size down or make a few little adjustments for your shape or skip it. Another red flag might be you don't really have an interest in sewing or um, sewing closures. So this pattern requires either buttonholes or snaps um, or a zip. So these steps are pretty much required for any kind of outerwear piece, um, but closures like these for newer sewists especially 
these kind of steps might feel intimidating and maybe something that you aren't ready for yet or you're not interested in learning how to do. Um, and that's totally cool because there's lots of other patterns that don't require any closures at all. And, um, you know, you can always come back to this when your skills are a little bit more developed. Another red flag for this pattern collection, if you want a pattern that has explicit instructions for creating a lining. So this pattern collection does not include a lining in the pattern pieces or in the instructions. However, it does suggest a ton of ways for getting a lovely interior finish that's complete and beautiful um, by binding the seams and a couple other ways. But also I have a tutorial for you on making your own lining, which is what I've done with my jackets and for my family. And it's so easy. Um, basically you'll just sew two sets of the main body, one in your outer fabric and one in your slippery interior fabric. And it just, it goes together so easy. All you would need is just see that visual and, and you would totally get it. So, but if you require more explicit tutorial help putting that all together, um, you might want to skip this pattern if you're not looking for that. Um, but I did link my tutorial below and maybe take a look at that before you make your decision. So those might be some red flags for you and that's okay. Um, there are tons of other patterns in the Love Notions library that might be just a complete 100% green flag for you um, right now. And maybe you'll come back to this pattern in the future. So no hard feelings on our end, I promise. Next, let's talk about a few beige flags. So beige flags are not really signs whether you're gonna love the pattern or not. They're just some like neutral like quirks or things that you might find interesting. So one beige flag is that the Clef Collection's name is based on the musical term. Um, a clef is a, uh, a sign or a symbol that indicates the key in a musical composition. And even certain instruments like will use certain clefs. For example, for vocals, like the lower um, like bass and tenor singers use the bass clef. And then typically sopranos and altos use uh, a treble clef. Um, the treble is like that little circly, like a little like I don't know, it's a treble clef. <laughs> and the bass clef is kind of like a backward seat. Um, there's a lot more to clefs in like musical theory. Um, but interesting fact is that all of the woven patterns in the Love Nations Library, they're all named after musical terms. Um, another, you know, neutral fact or idea was that clef coat, um, when it was developed originally, there were no plans to have a kids or a men's version. Um, however, after it released, a ton of people requested it. He said, my husband or my kid would love one out of this. Can you please make us in um, men's and kids sizes? And so once we figured out the name of Bass and Trouble, it was just like irresistible. We couldn't put it, <laughs> we couldn't pass it up. Um, another fact is that the bass and the treble clef patterns are um, developed by Kelly, who um, has put together a bunch of the men's and kids patterns at Love Notion. So thank you, Kelly, for all of your work on this project. Another like beige piece of information <laughs> or flag is um, if you liked these uh, clef coat patterns. You might like some of the other like full collection um, patterns that we have, like the Thomas track pants or the pullovers um, or the game day jerseys. So I'll talk more about those later. So that ends our segment segment on flags and let's transition over to talking about fabric. So this segment, we're going to talk about what's in our stash or in our cart. So I rummaged through my stash or our stash here at the workshop, and here are some of the fabrics that I'm excited to pair with a future clef coat or a base clef or a treble clef. Um, if you're interested in more fabric and want to know more about the fabric that I sewed for my, used to sew my husband's and my daughter's versions, I actually found it on Amazon and I have some thoughts and I'm going to be sharing those in a future video. So keep a lookout for that. Um, but now let's talk about what I found in my stash that I think would be perfect for a future cleft coat. All right. So first up, I have this really pretty springy, lightweight woven fabric. Um, this fabric, we have lots of it. So it would be great from a pattern matching, like plaid matching perspective, because I think that when you've got uh, a fabric 
like this with this kind of design, to me, it's important to have those things match up. So having a little bit of extra of that would be great. Um, I could just see this with like a nice lightweight spring jacket. I could underline it or put a lining inside of it. Um, I would definitely do a zip because I think this lighter weight fabric doesn't do as well with um, button installations. And I just think it might be a little more practical to have it with a little bit extra thickness. Um, so that's one fabric that I think would make just such a cute cleft coat. Um, I also found in my stash this amazing fabric. I have had this for ages. I'm pretty sure I got it from Blackbird. Um, and it is this like textured cotton. And I think this would be great for like almost like a utility sort of coat, um, a cleft coat, just like the collar version, probably buttons because it's that real thick sturdy. It's going to be able to hold up to the um, those buttonholes um, or even snaps really. Um, and I think this would be um, a great spring jacket as well. Um, and as far as another spring jacket, I think this cute little like pinstriped, this would make a great um, just outer layer, like a quick, I wouldn't need to line it, just like a quick little piece to throw on over like in the summer, like for like a cool summer night. Um, this would be adorable. Maybe some like white snaps with this and finish off the, I wouldn't need to line it, um, but I would probably like finish off the inside with like some white bias tape and just get like a real nice crisp look um, when the hood fell open. Um, and so I think that would make a great piece that we have in our stash. Now for my kids, they would love to have, I know especially my five-year-old would love to have a um, coat made out of this. Um, this is from Shannon and I believe it's a faux fur. It's, it's like incredibly soft, but it is a uh, woven and um, a couple of people used uh, the faux fur or Sherpa or um, fleece um, to create their base clefts. And this would be just lovely. I would probably do like the collar version. And then for the interior collar lining, I would probably use like, I don't know, like a double brush poly or some sort of cute um, co co coordinating fabric for the collar and then finish off the inside with bias tape. But um, the inside of it, like the, the lining is kind of like, uh, the, the wrong side of the fabric is kind of like a silky uh, material, but this would be just like adorable as a clef coat. Um, I also, we have had this fabric in our stash for a long time. I think that Tammy originally got this for use with um, the Coda coat, which is sort of like a chore coat that is quilted. Um, and you could absolutely use quilted, pre-quilted fabric um, for this jacket. And um, this one is cool because, I think it's from Joann's. Um, this one is cool because the inside is finished just as nicely as the outside, so that you could use the right or the wrong sides. And um, I love that, especially with like a hood. I think that would be cute. Finish it all off with black bias tape would be really nice, cute make. Um, and then lastly, I just have like another one of these plaids that I found here. I think this would, was originally bought for maybe um, making an encore skirt, but I looked on the inside of this and it's actually like a fleecy sort of brushed interior. Um, I don't think it's a flannel. It's some kind of woven poly, I think. Um, it has a slight bit of stretch, but remember that the pattern, while it's really typically meant for woven fabrics, you can definitely use stable knits with it. So this is the type of fabric that would be perfect for that because it, while it has some stretch inside of it, it's, it bounces back to its original shape really well and it's nice and thick. So it's, it would be able to withstand like the zipper installation or button installation, um, really well. And this would make just like a really nice, um, outer, like just like maybe like a fall jacket. Again, this is a, a plaid. So I would definitely want to work on, um, having all of my pattern matching. And I also probably, if I did the button version, I would want to do it like with the, um, bias going down the placket of the button. Um, one of our testers, Katie Grimm, did that with her daughter's um, treble clef coat, and it was darling. So I think that would make a great version, um, a plaid kind of shacket style.
We also have a few fabric companies, like independent fabric companies, that um, I'm going to show some pieces that I think would be great for a cloth coat that they currently have in stock right now that you could go out and purchase right, um, right now today. Um, like I said before, I have a video coming out about Amazon. And I, again, I have mixed feelings about promoting fabric on Amazon, but I'm so happy to promote the fabric from companies that are independently owned and operated. All right, now that we've discussed fabric, Let's move on to the MVP of the pattern. So every project has its hero. And for uh, the case of the cleft coat, in my opinion, the MVP of this pattern collection is the ease. So I don't mean like the positive or the negative ease as far as fit. What I mean is how easy and simple the pattern actually is to construct. Um, all the sewing steps are really easy, especially when you consider how professional it looks, um, especially to somebody who has no clue about sewing. Like this looks like incomprehensibly hard, but it really is easy. So overall, I think that how easy this jacket is approachable, perfect for even a beginner sewist who's looking to, you know, tackle a couple of fun things. Um, it would be perfect for anybody like that. So let me know if you agree or disagree, or maybe if you have another kind of MVP of the pattern in mind, and um, just drop your comment below. Next up, the AUA section of the pattern, um, know before you sew. Um, AUA means ask us anything. And here are some of the questions that we saw asked about the clef coat. Um, so we have gone ahead and give you some of the answers to those questions um, in this next section. And now that base and trouble are, um, you know, they're constructed all really similarly. So I hope that these answers will help you tackle the patterns. Um, and if you have any other questions about the pattern collection, make sure that you keep them coming and maybe we'll address them in future content. So. One of the most common questions always is what type of fabric is best? A lot of people ask if they can use soft shell. And so like we discussed before in the fabric uh, section in the sash collection uh, se section of this video, um, this pattern collection is meant for woven fabrics, but you can totally use variety of stable knits. Um, flannel is perfect. Wool is great. Um, I don't know if you saw Tammy's wool Pendleton version. It's a perfect. Um, you could use chambray, twill. Um, those would make great lightweight spring jackets um, or even summer jackets. And I actually made mine and my husband's and my daughter's from a combination of canvas fabric, some pre-quilted knit for the inside of the hoods, and some slippery pre-quilted lining. So like I said before, let's talk about that in the Amazon video. So as far as soft shell with this original uh, questioner's question. Um, Sasha would be great as long as it had the right amount of uh, like stability. So that's typically a little bit stretchy, but it would make a great outerwear jacket for spring. Um, and there were even some questions about, you know, speaking of fabric, there were some questions about board short fabric. Uh, and that makes a wonderful clef. Um, and actually, if you take a look at um, the content from Nicole, she's at So Hard of Hearing on Instagram. She made this incredible board short version. Um, and we've also seen that fleece and corduroy, a lot of other fabrics are great. Another question that came in was about zippers. They said, what do I do if my zipper is too long? So this, interestingly, the zipper length for the hooded view is actually shorter than the collared view. So in the fabric requirement pages for all of the patterns, you'll see the lengths required. Um, if you don't have quite the right length, it's too long, don't worry you can totally shorten the length of the zipper. Um, however, you can't just cut it to the right length. In addition to cutting it, you also have to pull off all of those extra teeth that would be inside of the seam allowance. So to do that, all you would do is unzip the zipper, you would firmly hold onto that tape for the zipper, and then you would use a pair of needle nose pliers to pry off each of the teeth inside of that seam allowance. For me, it was like five or six. Um, you could even pull off like that zipper stop piece and, and reinstall that um, in, the, in the right spot uh, for the zipper tape. So, you would just want to be triple sure not to slide the zipper 
pull off during this process. I cannot tell you how many times I've done that before and it's so frustrating. So um, there's tons of tutorials out in the, on YouTube or um, online that you can use to um, get some help with shortening a zipper. It is so easy. Another question that came in was asking about, um, does the pattern require elastic at the hems, like at the sleeves and the bottom hem? So it actually doesn't require it. You could choose to install, uh, install a drawstring through that channel that's made when you turn up the hem, um, or you could just leave it empty and open as is. And that's actually how my husband preferred to have his. He did not want to have any elastic and he didn't want to have any gathering like mine is. Um, he just wanted it plain and simple and that's what he got. So another question that came in was, I love a pocket, but the welt pocket intimidates me. What do I do? So first of all, you're not alone. It can be really scary to have something all cut and sewn and kind of marked and everything. And you, then you have to just like cut right into it. And it could just be completely ruined with one accidental swipe of your scissors. And it's just totally nerve wracking. So what I would suggest that you do is practice. Grab some extra cuts of the pocket pieces and some of the scraps of the main and then play around with them. Interface everything. Use the fabrics that you're gonna be using on your final make and just do your best to learn from each one. I would probably do two or three. And um, as you're doing it, work on your marking tools. That's the key here. You need some marking tools where you can mark clearly on the fabric. It's not going to go away with heat and that it's not going to rub off easily and that the markings are just precisely put there because that's the key to being able to get a great wall pocket is those sharp, crisp corners. So practice. Um, I actually, in my husband's, um, when I was making his, I felt the same like nervousness. So I made an interior welt pocket for him because I just felt a little more comfortable cutting into the lining pieces instead of the outer um, pieces of the garment. And he loves that. So maybe consider making one on the inside if you choose to do a lining. The next section is speed it up or step it up. So whether you're in a hurry and you're looking for something that's fast, or if you're aiming for absolute perfection, we have got you covered in this seg segment of the video. So I'm gonna share some specific tips to speed up your sewing for the cleft coat or some ways to really give it that extra polish finish. So here's how to speed it up. First, to speed it up, I would probably skip the bias binding for the collar or the interior seams. It's not necessary, it's really just for looks. Um, it's not gonna affect the integrity of the garment. I would, could skip it. You also might consider skipping the muslining step. And I, I don't really suggest that ever, but with this kind of pattern when it comes to the fit, I think that you could be pretty confident in skipping it if you just take your measurements carefully and maybe hold up the pattern pieces to see if you need to do anything, you know, special for yourself. But it's a really forgiving fit, so you could totally skip the, the muslining if you needed to. So another thing that you could do to give it a little bit of more of a fast finish is to skip the installing of grommets or buttonholes for the drawstrings. Just you could completely skip the drawstrings altogether. Either you could just use elastic, which is always pretty fast, or you could just go without for a very simple, sleek, straight line look. Um, another thing you could do is to sew the hood version. Funnily enough, even though it feels like it takes more fabric, it's actually faster to sew the hood version on this pattern than the collar version. And that's because the collar requires aligning and interfacing and several more like precise sewing steps where you kind of have to slow down um, to get like that really crisp look. And so the hood, it just, I don't even know if it actually needs more fabric according to the pattern. Um, but if you're in a hurry and you have some fabric for a hood, I would say go that route. Um, another thing is if, in your, if you're in a hurry, um, sew the zipper view. It is so much faster. Buttons require, um, and even snaps require some time and patience and some extra tools and more pieces and interfacing and then you have to decide on the buttons and it becomes like a whole big thing. Um, but a zipper requires just a single pass or two through your machine and then you're set. Um, I would just make sure to match up uh, key, some key points on your garment. So like I would match up the zipper with like the top of the kangaroo pocket and make sure that you're really marking those carefully as you're sewing in the zipper so that everything just like lines up perfectly. Now, if you really want to like step up your make and make it really professional and polished and give it all the bells and whistles, one thing I would definitely do is to cover all the interior seams with binding, uh, bias binding tape, especially that collar. That would be beautiful. 
Or if you wanted to, you could use my lining tutorial and get just like a totally cozy, comfy, completely covered inside make. Um, and even like the kangaroo pockets, you could line those. And um, I did that for mine and I love how it feels. Another thing you could do is you could add in all the pockets and then some. You could add in double welt pockets. You could um, really put some nice details on the kangaroo pockets. You could even install kangaroo pockets on the interior like I did for my husband's. Another really nice way to step it up that I think is a good idea is to make that muslin and to practice um, the fit, but also to practice uh, techniques like the pocket installation or the zipper. Another way to step it up is to really work with some fun fabric coordinates. Um, it's always easier to just do one straight style and not think about it, but if you work with coordinates and mixing and matching and trying to do like that, you know, button placket bias um, plaid or um, really be careful with your pattern matching with um, whatever design you have or um, stripes or whatever, using a non-solid fabric can really step up your make. The other thing you could do to step it up is to put in lots of extras, like clothing tags, um, maybe one of those little leather stamp tags around like the pocket area. Um, you could work in some special buttons um, or use um, leather or canvas like patches around your grommets. That would really take it up to the next level. The next section is all about makes that we love. Oh, it's a shout out time. Um, we have seen some incredible makes from our testers and I cannot sh wait to share them with you. And for this pattern, actually, we've seen makes from our testers as well as the ambassadors and just people in our Love Notion sewing group. So here are some of our thoughts on these stunning creations. First up, Marianne McLean. She, we have to give her a big shout out. Um, she's an ambassador with the Love Notions team and she jumped in on this pattern, Taz, and she created several versions of the pattern. Um, she defines the, you know, coastal luxury, I feel like is what she does. Um, she always bulls me over with her original versions. She has like this flannel one that's gorgeous. She had a twill one that is so beautiful. Um, and when it came to testing for the men's space, she made a corduroy version for her husband. And I think his smile says it all. Um, what a great make. So another one I'm in awe of right now that was in our pattern support group is Nancy Cunningham's version. Um, she, I found this recently in the pattern support group and um, she made it obviously after the release of the ladies wear version of Clef. Um, and I just, I love this. It's so cozy. It's so beautiful. She just nailed the fabric selection. Um, she said that it's a uh, coating weight woven um, and just like the pattern of that fabric is beautiful. So. Well done, Nancy. You picked the perfect thing to um, use for your cleft coat. Now, another uh, tester that we just loved all of her versions was Branilyn. Um, she sewed, <laughs> she sewed for her little brother um, as well as her son, and she just did a fabulous job of creating some pieces that her family loves. And I hope that they appreciate those custom fit pieces for um, for each of her models. So if you look at her her son's version, he, it's like a dinosaur camouflaged coat. And I just, any kid would be so happy to wear that. So well done on that. Um, and then she also um, sewed for her brother. And um, this guy, she says, is thrilled to have a jacket that fits his 5X frame. And I think that she just did a fabulous job. Peter Illingworth is another new past pattern tester that we have. And actually he's our, I think our first ever male tester. So we are so pleased to welcome him into our group. And um, you might've noticed he's been showing off some of the lovely makes that he's made for the base cleft. Um, and in the past, he actually had more sewn for his wife and his family. Um, and he's been really active in our pattern support group. And we actually reached out to him and asked if he'd like to have a crack at this new men's pattern. And just, he completely knocked it out of the park. Um, obviously you can see that here. Um, and so Peter, thank you so much for your thorough feedback and the fabulous couple of makes that you've got. Uh, we cannot wait to continue sewing with you. Um, Peter sewed a size extra large and he actually used this really cool um, denim look. It's like a cotton wool dead stock fabric from, I think it was like an Irish designer or British designer. Beautiful. Um, another shout out goes to Sonarti. 
she is getting a shout out for cuteness overload. <laughs> Her two kiddos look so adorable in their new clef uh, coats, uh, treble clefs. So cute. Um, she just captured the sweetest photos of these kids. And um, I just love how she was able to show off the treble clef with those um, contrasting fabrics and like the knitted, the pre um, quilted fabric. Um, and then she just captured these beautiful personalities. So thank you so much for testing with us. Now you might be wondering what's next on the horizon for Love Notions and it's Crescendo. So here's a little bit of a sneak peek at this gorgeous new pattern and they are pull on jeans. They have boot cut flare, straight leg skinny, um, and they take a really special kind of fabric. So if you want some more details on these pull on stretch denim jeans, um, make sure that you come back in a week or two where we'll give you lots of information. So that's a wrap for today's episode of what you should know before you sew a cleft coat. So whether you have already picked up the ladies wear version or plan to, or you're getting the base cleft version or the treble cleft version, you're going to find lots of ways to use this pattern in yours or your family's wardrobe. Um, I guarantee that once they see one, they're going to ask to have one made for, for you. That's what happened to me at least. So thanks for joining us in on this What to Know Before You Sew episode. Um, grab your pattern ASAP. The sale for the men's and the kids version is on through next Monday, March 11th, 2024. And as always, happy sewing.